What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're getting some tomatoes planted. I thought it'd be a great opportunity to do a lightning round addressing all of the tomato misconceptions that I've heard over the years. And so with that, let's get started. The first misconception is if you put a copper penny near your tomato plants, that the copper will prevent things like tomato blight later on. This is not true because you first have to find a penny that's older than 1943. That's when they took copper out of pennies to save copper for the war efforts with things like bullet shells, bullet casings. And so they actually now make most of your pennies out of things like zinc. And so you don't actually have a lot of copper content in your pennies. But even if that were true, the copper does not oxidize fast enough to release the, uh, the copper into the soil at a rate that is even noticeable by plants. So it's a very common misconception. My grandpa used to bury pennies, swearing it worked. It just sadly does not work. But if you wanna keep trying it, it also, I mean, that's just my two cents, isn't really gonna hurt anything either. So the second most common misconception is that if you add sugar to your tomatoes, it's gonna to make your tomatoes sweeter. This is not true. In fact, we did a whole video on why it's not true. But in short, adding sugar to your tomato plants is simply going to add sugar to the soil, which can attract things like ants, which can then bring on things like aphids. Sugar cannot be absorbed by your plant roots. The reason why is because the sugar molecule is too large to go in to the receptors in the roots. See, a molecule like, say, uh, a nitrogen molecule, right? A nitrogen molecule can go into the plants because the, the molecule is small enough, but sugar, because it's such a large molecule, is like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. It's just not gonna happen. It's not actually large enough to fit. Third most common tomato misconception is that if you prune off the suckers, you're gonna get more fruit. Now this is simply not true, and the reason why is because eventually those suckers will produce fruit. The reason why we prune them off is because they steal energy away from the plant temporarily, which can seem like it's giving you less yields. The reason why we do it is to increase airflow so that overall we have a healthier plant. You see, when we grow them up these stakes here, we like to single stem them and take away those suckers to make a cleaner plant. This allows us to plant closer together, which will give us more tomatoes. But if we had simply one plant and we allowed it to simply bush out and get as big as possible, we would have an overabundance of tomatoes, far more than the single plant being single stemmed to one little stem. Now again, this is a misconception because of the fact that people say that, it, that those suckers will not give fruit. The fact of the matter is, is that they will give fruit in climates that allow the plant to grow long enough. That's the big difference. On a plant that is a determinate tomato, that is a determined height, a determined yield, you let it get bushy as it is, and we don't ever bat an eye. But with indeterminates, those tomatoes grow all season long. As long as the season will allow, that tomato will continue to grow and flower and fruit. So in shorter climates, like here in Michigan, it's advantageous to pull off those suckers so we can prioritize growing it up a single stem, keeping it healthy, and allowing the fruit that does form to ripen. That's the real truth about why it's important to prune your suckers. You're not gonna get a whole lot more yield. In fact, you can actually decrease your yield slightly, but in a shorter growing season, you can actually seemingly get more fruit because the fruit is being prioritized rather than future growth. Just really wanna make some, some, clear, uh, some clear distinctions there between the, you know, the truth and the misconception of why we prune the suckers on tomatoes. All right, the fourth misconception with tomatoes is that if you plant basil next to your tomatoes, it makes them sweeter. This is simply not true at all. Now, basil and tomatoes does go very well together, and basil will, in fact, keep your tomatoes more pest-free. We talk about this all the time when we're talking about intercropping and the benefits of putting herbs next to plants like a tomato that might encounter things like aphids or tomato hornworm throughout the growing season. But the idea that the basil will, in fact, make the tomatoes sweeter is simply not true. There have been many studies, double blind and, and uh, very thorough studies done, where you one person uh, has a tomato that's been grown next to basil and they have a tomato that is just been grown on its own. They cannot tell a difference uh, unequivocally. Um, there's been many studies where uh, the uh, even the, the sugar content, the bricks level, has been studied with tomatoes that have been grown next to basil and tomatoes that have not. And in many studies, uh, it shows the same exact bricks level uh, from both tomatoes. There's 
no difference really whatsoever. The only thing that we really can ascertain is that we think the tomatoes are sweeter because the, the aroma from the basil is so strong and so fragrant that it gets, it actually increases serotonin levels, which makes you happy and sugar also makes you happy. And so that chemical reaction in the mind gets us to think that we're eating a tomato that is sweeter because a tomato that's been grown near basil has a lot of those basil aromas still attached to it. And because it's such an overpowering, great flavor, it has a sweeter flavor, it can make you think because you taste is a lot of what you smell. When you smell something that tastes sweet, you also can trick your mind into thinking that it tastes sweeter. That is really what scientists have kind of pinned down as the truth between the whole basil and tomato planting next to each other myth. All right, the fifth most common misconception around tomatoes is that birds love eating tomatoes. This is not true. Now, birds do in fact peck tomatoes, but scientists have proven this to be false multiple times. And how they found this was false was they put a water feeder next to tomatoes and found that the birds left the tomatoes alone, but favored the water, the, the water bath, the bird bath, 10 to one. And that means what they're going for is the water found in the tomatoes. What you can simply do is put a water bath, a bird bath, near your tomato plants or in your garden, and your, your tomato plants will generally be left pretty bird free. Again, there is a one, you know, one out of 10 odds that the birds will favor the tomato over the bird bath, but it will greatly decrease the odds because on a dry day, birds need water just like you and I do. And birds are biologically honed in to moisture rich fruits. That's the same exact reason why they peck holes in things like peaches or in tomatoes. And don't get me wrong, it's frustrating no matter what. But we need to really kind of understand the how and why of why it happens, because if you can solve the problem with a bird bath, you don't have to worry as much about telling your neighbors that birds are eating all your tomatoes. It's just simply not true. And so it might be true in a small, small subset of facts, but in most studies that have been done, it's just the water they're after. All right, the sixth most common tomato misconception is that you can only grow tomatoes one time a year. Now we've done tons of videos debunking this myth and just how it's simply not true, but that's because a lot of gardeners just feel like you plant your tomatoes in the spring, you let them grow all season, and then when they're done, they're done. And when they're done, it's usually too late to grow another harvest of tomatoes. But what if I told you that that's not true? The reason why is because yes, we do have a spring planting of tomatoes for you know a late summer harvest. We're gonna be getting tomatoes probably well through about, I'd say like early to mid September before they start to kind of fizzle out a little bit. But around early July, late June, we're gonna be planting seeds in containers, seeds, tomato seeds in containers. These are gonna be determinate Roma tomatoes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be growing these determinate Roma tomatoes in containers so that when the time is right, we can actually either plant out a new bed that we are transitioning out or phasing out, or uh, if the tomatoes end early, we can take those tomatoes, pop them in the, you know, basically in the same place that those other tomatoes were growing and grow a fall harvest of tomatoes. Now, the, the planting time is going to be, you know, probably mid to late summer that we're gonna plant them. The harvest time is gonna be very late fall. We probably won't get tomatoes until I would say around maybe early October or so. And again, we're doing this with the sole intent of getting all those tomatoes all at once. So for things like tomato sauce, tomato paste, um, or even just you know having tomatoes in the freezer, we're growing a ton of tomatoes all at once. And that's the reason why we're going with a determinate tomato. If we grew an indeterminate tomato, I think it'd be true. You might get a few tomatoes, but because they're indeterminates, they're gonna grow all season long. And because they're started late and they really are intending to grow, you know, they're two, three, four months longer than that, they're gonna hit a point where the frost is gonna come and kill them off. Whereas a determinate tomato will put all of its fruit out at once. It'll stop growing. It'll focus on ripening fruit. We can harvest all the fruit and then be done. And that's one of the nice things about growing a determinant for your fall harvest. We've done videos. In fact, I'll try to post a link in the description box below to that video of us harvesting our fall tomatoes. Because I had people tell me nonstop that, you know, again, I'm blowing smoke because what I'm saying is not true. And I say, simply say, look, I would never post something that's not true here because my goal is to help you guys grow more food. And if you want to sit there and think that you can only grow one harvest of tomatoes through that, you know, for your season, and when that harvest of tomatoes is done, your growing season is done, you can go ahead and think that and that's totally fine. 
but you're missing out on a whole other season of tomatoes where you could be growing another 50 to 100 or even more pounds of tomatoes in a single bed like this. So definitely not, uh, definitely not true that you're only getting one harvest of tomatoes per season. All right, the seventh and final tomato misconception is kind of what I wanna consider an umbrella misconception because we did touch on how adding sugar to your tomatoes does not in fact make them sweeter. But in doing this episode, I realized there was a lot of other misconceptions that had to do with making tomatoes sweeter. And so I wanted to touch on all of them because if you're using them in your garden, not only do they not work, but they could in fact be causing damage to not only your tomato plants, but your soil. So I wanna to touch on those and the first one is adding things like Epsom salt or magnesium sulfate to your soil. There's an old myth that if you uh, add Epsom salt to your plants that it's gonna make them sweeter. Uh, and in fact, that could not be further from the truth. Now, magnesium, true, can help with plant growth. It'll help to uptake nitrogen to make your plants greener. It can give you more flowers, but it's not gonna have any effect on overall tomato sweetness. Now, the sulfate portion of Epsom salt uh, will help to lower the pH of the soil, increase the acidity. That can help the tomato, if it's in an environment that is slightly alkaline, can help the plant to uptake more nutrients and be a little bit healthier, but that's not gonna have any effect on the overall acidity of the, of the tomato. Now, uh, the second uh, kind of misconception around sweetening tomatoes is with adding something like, uh, like baking soda. Um, there's an old wives tale about adding about a tablespoon of baking soda around the tomato plant. And that idea kind of comes around the, uh, the misconception of adding an acid to a base. Well, what happens when you take something alkaline and you mix it with something acidic, what happens is it buffers. And so if you take say like lemon juice at a pH of, I don't know, 4.5, and you add something like baking soda to that, the baking soda will take away the acidity because of the reaction. It'll have a chemical reaction and you'll be left with a substance that's slightly less acidic. It's gonna have an acidity of maybe like six, right? So the idea is that you made something less acidic and on your tongue, we have a tendency to say something that is less acidic is a little more sweet. But that's not how the pH of a tomato actually works. That's how it works in, you know, in the, ke the, uh, the chemistry world. But in the soil chemistry, that's not how it works. And so ultimately what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be changing the soil biology by making the soil more alkaline because that's what baking soda is, is more alkaline. And what you're doing is you're essentially changing the soil pH, which is inevitably gonna make your tomato plant sicker, have a harder time uptaking nutrients, and you're ultimately gonna be setting yourself up for failure by doing that. And so um, while it might not kill your tomato plant, it's certainly not gonna be helping you. Then the third misconception around making tomatoes sweeter is with adding something like vinegar. So um, I was told this, my grandma used this trick for a long time, and once I found out that it was just a myth and it didn't actually work, um, I told her about it and she was hesitant to believe me because her grandparents did it, and that was adding a cup of vinegar to a gallon of water and watering your tomatoes. Now again, simply watering your tomatoes with vinegar water is going to temporarily acidify the soil, but it's not going to make your tomatoes any sweeter. Because if anything, I mean, if you think about it, okay, so baking soda is alkaline and that doesn't make your tomatoes sweeter. So what is the rationale with making your soil even more acidic than it already was? Wouldn't that just make your tomatoes more acidic? If the logic, <laughs> if the logic was true and the logic transferred, that would be further from the truth. But thank goodness it just doesn't really do anything at all. If anything, it's really just gonna throw your soil out of whack because what it's going to do is your soil, if it's a pH of seven, it's gonna make your soil very acidic very quick. And it's gonna give your tomato plants kind of what I call plant whiplash, right? Or pH whiplash, where it's gonna be seven and five, seven and five. And the more you do it, it's just gonna keep whiplashing them back to five and then it's slowly gonna buffer back to seven. And that is not great for the plant's health. It's not great. It's like if you go from a really, really warm environment and then go into AC, right? It's the, they call it homeostasis. It's a very complex term of your body likes to be in an environment that is very stable. That just messed up my homeostasis. Anyways, so, uh, so <laughs> tomatoes are just like your body. It doesn't wanna be growing in an environment that's seven, gets comfortable with seven, a pH of seven, and then all of a sudden you're like five and then it grows in a pH of seven and five. It doesn't like that. And so you're not gonna be making your tomatoes any sweeter by doing that. And if anything, you're gonna be harming your tomato plants overall. So uh, don't do that either. The biggest thing that I can say is adding something like mulch, adding like uh, 
a, a black weed fabric can help to warm the soil. Having a tomato plant that's, uh, that's in warm soil has been shown to create more sugars, which equals a sweeter tomato. Um, decreasing the amount of water that you give your tomatoes um, in, a, in a hotter, drier environment, those tomatoes are gonna condense more of their sugars in the fruits, yielding a sweeter tomato. Um, if there's more sunlight, if they're exposed to more full sun, the plants are gonna generate more energy through photosynthesis, and that energy is in the form of sugars, which will make your tomatoes sweeter. So if you're growing in a very cloudy environment or a very low light environment, your tomatoes are gonna be more acidic as well. And then also just changing the color of the tomatoes. If you're growing red tomatoes, red tomatoes have a higher acidity than like a yellow or an orange tomato, which is typically gonna be a lower acid tomato. And so just kind of knowing those things, those are things you can actually control. Those things will actually make your tomatoes sweeter, not some of those other ones. But I hope you guys enjoyed some of these tomato misconceptions. There's a ton of them out there, like I said, but uh, these are probably the seven, seven most common that I wanted to rapid fire through. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to throw a thumbs up there. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments box down below which mis misconception you have heard and if you've tried it in your garden. So as always, guys, take care and grow bigger. Bye.